Okay, let's move on to barter transactions. So when are we gonna use a barter transaction? This is when we do an exchange of goods and services with other small business. In other words, our vendor and our customer will have the exact same role in, in two different transactions, right? Where I'm gonna be buying from a vendor and also selling to that vendor, but they're gonna be uh, two different personas per se, or two different entities inside QuickBooks. And now we wanna cross an open invoice from one with an open bill from the other. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a bank account that's gonna serve as a clearing account for posting those barter transactions. And we're gonna receive the payment against that bank account, and we're also gonna make the payment against that bank account. So the way it'll work more or less is you will have a, an invoice with a payment received for a dollar amount. It could be the same as the bill, and you're gonna have the bill with a payment made with the same dollar amount or a different one. At the end of the day, we have to use the same dollar amount for both the invoice and the bill. And if there's a balance, uh, you would just treat the balance as a normal transaction, okay? So let's go ahead and do an example of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and create an invoice for a customer that's always also gonna be my vendor. So I'm gonna put here customer corp, and I'm gonna create them as a customer. Okay, and I'll select a, um, let's, let's make the example the same. So we'll do a $5,000 invoice. We sell them um, our services just like we would do with any customer. Create the invoice for customer corp, dollar amount, and then click save and close. We don't have to receive a payment against it yet. Let's go ahead and now create a bill. So let's go create the bill against now customer corp, and I have to create them as another entity and I'll put it in parentheses, vendor. So what I like to do is I like to make the customer uh, the, their original name. And then when I create them again as a vendor, I put the word vendor in parentheses, letting me know that this uh, customer is acting like a vendor for this specific transaction. And let's say that um, they, gave, they made some services for us, let's say back in April. And we'll select the account. Let's say this was a subcontractor. And let's say this was uh, $3,000. So we have an invoice for $5,000 uh, in which our customer owes us money. We have a bill for $3,000 that we owe them money. We are not going to make uh, the three, the first $3,000 of that bill. We're not really going to make any monetary exchange. We're going to cancel the bill uh, with the invoice. So we're going to mark the invoice paid and also mark the bill paid. So the first thing we have to do is I'm going to go into the chart of accounts and I'm going to create a new bank account. So I'm gonna create it as a bank account and I'm gonna call it barter. Okay, some people call it exchange or barter. It really uh, doesn't matter what you call it as long as you know uh, that you're using it for the exact same thing. So I'm calling it barter slash exchange. Satisfied both, uh, both roles here. So I created a barter slash exchange account. I'm gonna go ahead and pay the bill. So I'm gonna go to pay bills and I'm going to pay the bill from my barter exchange account, not from a normal bank account, from a barter exchange account. I'm going to select the bill I'm going to pay. I'm going to pay for $3,000. I'll select today's date. And then starting check number, I really don't need to put anything. I mean, I could type the word barter if I want to or leave it blank. It really doesn't matter. And I click uh, save and close. So now that marks the bill paid, notice that now my barter account is negative $3,000. I'm gonna make that barter account zero by receiving a payment against that account. So I'm gonna go to the quick create button and then I'm gonna click on receive payment. Then I'm gonna select my customer from the list. Okay, I'm gonna select the, the invoice here and then I'm gonna select the, where it says deposit to, I'm gonna deposit that into barter or exchange, and I'm gonna change the dollar amount to 2,000, okay? Uh, 3,000 actually, 3,000, so I can make that account uh, even zero. On the payment method, what I could do is I can go to add new here and create one called barter. That way it's just pretty, pretty clear there. And then on the reference number, I can leave that blank or I can type barter again. Again, it's really up to you uh, whether you wanna put something there or, or, or type it. So it's really up to you there. So there's uh, 3,000. I wanna make sure that all 3,000 is being applied to the invoice and it's coming from my barter bank account. I'm gonna click on save and close. 
So now if I look at the chart of accounts, my barter account should be at zero. There is my uh, debit and my credit that makes that account zero. So then when I go receive the actual payment from the customer, I go to receive payment. And then I select the customer that's paying me. So let me select the customer. I select an actual real account now because it wouldn't be using the barter account anymore. So let's say they're gonna pay me uh, with a check. Um, I'll put my check number, put it in my Chase checking account, and all this should follow a standard uh, process. So after the bill has been matched with the invoice by doing the bill payment and the receive payment for the same dollar amount, so that barter account is at zero, any consequent balances will be handled uh, the standard way as you would handle any other open balance from a vendor or an open balance from a customer.